So this is a somewhat different part of the symposium uh, honoring Alec Dargano, but uh, once again it is uh, reflecting his ac accomplishments uh, of a different kind since he obviously is largely responsible for the creation of ITAMP. Um, I'm covering the prehistory before ITAMP was funded. It came into existence officially as of November 1st, 1988. Um, I'll do the prehistory, um, and I'm doing it because I was at NSF as a rotator in the period from 1987 to 1989, uh, and therefore I can say a bit uh, about what was going on as ITAMP was founded. Uh, however, I'll also say a little bit about the prehistory uh, in the AMO community, uh, which goes back officially at least to uh, 1984 uh, that I know of, uh, when uh, TAMOC came into existence. Uh, TAMOC uh, is the Theoretical Atomic Molecular Optical Physics Community, um, which held its first meeting uh, in Storrs, Connecticut, uh, at the DEEP meeting, now DAMOP, uh, May 19, 1984. It was convened by three people, uh, by Lloyd Armstrong, by Alec Delgarno, and by Neil Lane. Um, and um, if you're interested, uh, on the APS website, you'll find uh, some history of the uh, first 10 years of TAMOC. It was already being mentioned at that point uh, that there was the problem that Hussein was referring to, uh, scarcity of AMO positions at uh, top universities, problems of the general health of AMO, and the idea of an atomic theory center institute was mentioned already that year. That's 84. By a year later, in 85, at the next TAMOC meeting, uh, a number of institutions were contemplating proposals, um, and there were reports at the TAMOC meeting about them. Uh, there was discussion from uh, uh, University of Tennessee, from Texas A&M, from USC, which was later joined by Caltech, from LSU, um, and from uh, Nebraska-Kansas State joint activity. The next year, uh, the possibility of a Smithsonian or Harvard-Smithsonian uh, proposal was being reported, and still later uh, there was a discussion of a proposal from Jilla. Uh, so in all, as far as I can tell, uh, there were some seven such proposals contemplated, not all of which were submitted uh, to NSF physics. Uh, some may also have been submitted to other uh, program elements like the science and technology centers. The final uh, outcome uh, of that was that uh, ITAMP was funded in 1988 and a smaller uh, program was funded at, at Jilla in 1989. While this was going on, uh, as Hussein also alluded to, uh, the concern over atomic theory uh, came to the fore in reports from the NRC, the National Research Council. There were two such reports. There was a, a general report on the health of uh, AMO physics in 1986, part of a general series of reports on physics. Uh, that, the panel that made that report was chaired by uh, Dan Kleppner, there were uh, three uh, uh, theorists uh, on that uh, panel. Uh, they were, once again, Alec Delgarno, uh, Neil Lane, uh, and Joe Masick. Uh, and that uh, panel report um, makes special acknowledgement to help from uh, uh, Lloyd Armstrong. Then uh, there was the report a year later that Hussein referred to, the 1987 report uh, on theoretical AMO science, which uh, 
elaborated on things that had been said in the 86 report. The 86 report had almost nothing to say about atomic theory. It had two paragraphs, but those two paragraphs, in fact, did give the key ideas. They said uh, a major problem is the dispersed nature of the theoretical community. There's a need to focus efforts to attract students. The panel recommends that agencies invite and support proposals addressing this issue, for example, by creating centers, workshops, or summer schools. So they specifically made that recommendation. The 87 report was actually a bit more cautious. Uh, so the longer 87 report uh, noted that there was discussion in the community of a theory institute. Uh, it officially didn't take a position whether it was a good idea, but then went on for a page to say what the properties of such an institute should be, uh, and then went on for another paragraph uh, to, to say that the costs would be something in the order of a half million to an, one and a half million a year, uh, and that could not be obtained by reallocation from existing programs. So all those points uh, were made uh, in the period uh, before I came to NSF in September 87. Uh, before I came, there had been two proposals submitted the previous year um, while Peter Moore was the NSF rotator handling atomic theory. Those two proposals uh, were not uh, especially well reviewed and they were both declined. Uh, as of the time I came, uh, there were two more proposals uh, under some level of discussion, which Peter Moore briefed me on uh, when I arrived. Uh, in order that you understand the cast of characters that I'll be describing as I describe chronologically what happened during the next year, the, the cast of characters at NSF changed at that moment. Uh, Eric Block remained as director of the foundation, uh, but everyone else in the chain of command, so to speak, changed. Uh, Rich Nicholson became the new associate director for uh, mathematical and physical sciences. At the next level down, Gary Crawley of Michigan State became the acting director for physics uh, because Marcel Bardon, the permanent director, uh, went on leave to NATO at that moment. And then finally, I replaced uh, Peter Moore. Um, I have some chronological record of what went on that year because I wrote letters to my family. Uh, they hadn't come down to Washington with me. I was commuting back and forth weekly between Pittsburgh and Washington. Uh, these letters I have are a little frustrating uh, in that I mention things without really fully developing them. Presumably, some things were confidential and some things I didn't think family would be interested in. But as a result, I do have some record of what happened. So I came down at the end of September of 87, uh, talked for three days with Peter Moore. That's all the introduction you get to your job. And uh, I met Gary Crawley, who was going to be the physics director that year. Within the first couple of weeks, there were relevant meetings, uh, both within physics on allocation of the funds for the year and also of the physics advisory committee. And uh, in both cases, according to my letter, so there were debates going on as to whether theory in physics was underfunded in comparison to experiment. Uh, there were debates it's not, from my letters. I can't tell who was on which sides of, of these issues. By the beginning of November, I was writing that uh, discussions for a new initiative, like an institute in atomic theory, theory, may be my major issue for the year. So that was already clear to me by the beginning of November. Uh, at the end of the Christmas holidays, uh, coming back to Washington, I stopped here and uh, talked with uh, uh, Alec and Kate and others about the 
uh, their proposal that they were in the process uh, of developing. Uh, I made a similar visit within a few weeks of that to the colleagues who were developing the other proposal that would be submitted uh, that year. In, in mid-January, the theory people, NSF theory consisted of three people in those days, all of whom, as it happened, were also new that year for various reasons, uh, and, and nobody was there permanently. Uh, Boris Kaiser, who was the permanent theory person, was away on sabbatical that year. So the three of us met with Gary Crawley, and he uh, gave theory an additional $600,000, and he split it. Uh, we did always have problems through the through the year as to how theory money was to be allocated among the different subprograms, but in this case, uh, Gary gave me $250,000 explicitly towards a possible atomic theory institute. That's mid-January. The uh, Smithsonian proposal was submitted February 12th. It was at that moment submitted only by the Smithsonian. The involvement of Harvard came in uh, in a somewhat more complicated way as the months went on. So um, by uh, uh, the end of February or so, we had sent out the two proposals we received for review. And uh, we received the reviews of them between, mainly between mid-March, mid-April. Uh, between the two proposals, uh, it was clear that the ITAMP proposal was the uh, preferred one of the uh, referees, although uh, they were quite favorably uh, inclined toward the other proposal uh, as well. Uh, both of them were much better received than those of the previous year. Uh, one element of the uh, ITAM proposal that re referees found of, of particular interest was the fact that between Harvard and the Smithsonian, they were going to jointly create a full professorship in the Harvard Physics Department in Atomic Theory to be funded, however, by the Smithsonian. So that was what was going on uh, towards the end, by, by the end of April, and we were getting fairly close to uh, trying to fund something. Uh, but uh, a number of developments happened uh, in May. Uh, the first development, uh, I'm a little unclear whether it was or was not important, uh, but according to my letters, the uh, Rich Nicholson, the associate director on a Monday, came to me at Block's direction, Block was the director of the foundation, uh, to find out why Livermore was concerned about atomic theory. Uh, Eric Block was going to be giving a talk at Livermore on Wednesday of that week, so Monday Nicholson is delegated to find out from me what's atomic theory about. So that was one thing that happened, and, uh, and the message was that Livermore was interested and was going to have Eric Block talk with Edward Teller about this subject. Well, I'm frustrated I have no notes more as to why, what. Yeah. Okay, so that was one thing that happened. Uh, that same week, Gary Crawley and I were starting to meet with Nicholson, to discuss the problem that on a first reading, it appeared that under government regulations, the Smithsonian could not receive money from the NSF. Now, on more careful reading, uh, the situation was more complex, uh, and the Smithsonian could receive money for some purposes and not for others. And over the next several months, it was ironed out uh, a way using uh, some funding to Harvard, some funding to the Smithsonian to satisfy what the uh, budget people agreed were the government rules. Uh, it was important to have this Smithsonian funding, 
uh, as the overhead situation for visitors for the Smithsonian was much more attractive. And as it turned out, visitor money was not subject to this government prohibition. And so that part remained with Smithsonian while the rest went to Harvard. Okay, mid-May, according to my letter, a major upset developed when Eric Bloch was called to Capitol Hill by senators and congressmen from X, and I can't say what X was, um, to complain about reviews of last year, the previous year's X's theory center proposal. Uh, and those reviews, which I hadn't particularly seen, this all happened before I was at NSF, four out of the eight referees said that X was not a geographically suitable location for a theory institute. Well, understandably, congressmen, senators didn't like that once it got brought to their attention. So uh, Crawley and I met with Nicholson, and then as I flew back from Pittsburgh to Washington. The next Monday, I discovered that I had an appointment to see Eric Block with Nicholson that afternoon. Crawley was out of town. Block was going out of town the next day and didn't want to wait for Crawley to get back. So Nicholson and I met with Block, and Eric Block decided that the process had been flawed. Um, didn't accept any solutions we suggested, uh, and he told us to stop any action on the Harvard proposal that we were working on for that year, uh, and instead that we should send out a formal notice requesting submission of proposals for the next year. Okay. Uh, the next day, Crawley was back, and Crawley and I met with Nicholson, and Crawley uh, decided to ask Block to reconsider his decision. And according to my letter, uh, I outlined a message for Crawley to send to Block before I left for the airport to fly to California, uh, where I consulted in those days at Livermore. Uh, and my notes say also that when I was, while I was at Livermore on that trip, I discussed with Norm Bardsley, who had been an NSF rotator formally at Pitt, but by then at Livermore, and uh, someone else at Livermore. I discussed the Atomic Theory Institutes, including discussing results of the meeting between Edward Teller and Eric Block, period. I, I know nothing more of what, what that was about. Uh, when I came back from Livermore to NSF, I found that in response to Crawley's letter that Block had agreed to a compromise where X was going to be given a month if they wished to submit a new proposal. Uh, and it was not to be for more than $650,000. The X's proposal of the year before had been three or four times that. Uh, so they were given a month, uh, and if they wished to submit a proposal, it was supposed to be considered together with the other two that we already had. Uh, they, at, at the same offer, by the way, was given to the other people who had submitted the year before. Uh, they chose not to get in on those terms, uh, but X did choose to submit a new proposal, which they got to us uh, uh, by the uh, end of, uh, of June. And we quickly got it out for review to the same people who had reviewed the other two proposals. And somewhat before the end of July, uh, we could compare all of the proposals uh, and say that clearly the ITAM proposal was the favored proposal, uh, and this time there were no adverse comments on geography of anything. So uh, that was the end of July. Uh, the first week of August, 
Gary Crawley and I made an official site visit here. Uh, uh, it was a very short, abbreviated affair, but it was it was long enough to accomplish the needed objectives and in particular to resolve various issues about how to uh, split the funding between the Smithsonian and Harvard. And uh, we got uh, Block to agree to how we were doing that. Uh, and as a result of, uh, uh, so that was the first week of August. Uh, the middle of the second week of August, uh, I got a, a go ahead to uh, write up a recommendation for funding of ITAMP. And, and that was a personal go ahead from Block. So, you know, by this t time there had been enough fuss here that this was uh, considered at the top of the foundation, even though this was a very minor project in the NSF budget that even then was over a hundred million. And, and the first year funding was only going to be 300,000 for this. But nonetheless, it, it got attention at the top. It was, it was this, discussed in the same meeting that was being, according to my notes, that the creation of a, of a gravity wave detector was under discussion. And so it shared the agenda. Okay, so uh, at that point then, it uh, more or less happened uh, with the uh, 300,000, uh, three, uh, 300,000 for the first year to be 600,000 the next year, and according to the uh, intent to ramp up to 750,000 by the fifth year. But the last two years' funding were not to, to be stated for the moment uh, because they were contingent on progress in filling this full professor position at Harvard, uh, which there was some unease among some people at NSF. Uh, what, it, it was believed that Harvard Physics was in favor of doing this. It was unclear whether the president of Harvard University would or would not accept whatever proposal came from uh, Harvard Physics, is what my notes say. So it was uh, uh, submitted. It was, uh, I had thought that Gary, I, this was getting rather urgent because this was mid-August. Gary Crawley was returning to Michigan State as of August 31st. His year was up. Uh, so after I wrote it up, I stayed up most of one night doing that. Uh, and I thank Barry Schneider for retrieving from U.S. government archives the document I wrote so that I could refresh my memory of it. So um, Gary Crawley, in fact, in, in the end, signed it on August 26th, but didn't forward it, left it on his desk. And, Eric, uh, and uh, Marcel Bardon, who is returning to NSF, also signed it on September 2nd, his first official day back. So uh, Marcel did, had been told about it, and so both of them had agreed to go ahead with it. So um, in summary then, uh, it seems to me that Gary Crawley uh, deserves more credit than he's gotten for what happened. Uh, and he provided the initial 250000 which was most of the first year funding, as well as agreeing to the full year funding that would follow the next year. And then also, he was the one who chose to make the successful appeal to Block for a reconsideration. So you know, I, I think Gary Crawley uh, deserves more, more credit than he's gotten for the existence of ITAMP. Um, I have no idea of this situation involving Eric Block and Edward Teller, whether that was important or unimportant. Uh, one can certainly say that in the end, uh, Eric Block was supportive of the proposal, uh, despite these difficulties, including with Congress. Uh, and he personally said to go ahead with it, you know, since it had reached his level. Uh, finally, or semi-finally, uh, the existence of the TAMOC was clearly important in initiating what happened. The two NRC reports 
were clearly very important uh, and were used in arguments within NSF for the importance of it. I quoted extensively from them in the analysis I prepared uh, recommending funding. And finally, uh, to repeat what I said at the beginning, uh, the greatest credit for the funding accomplishment of ITAMP was Alex's work, because nothing would have happened without him. Thanks.